Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. I'm going to be sharing two different ways for you to color vellum today. Both are quick and easy, and I hope it's going to allow you to use this gorgeous opaque paper more often. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the bell icon that's next to it, and you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table, and let's get started on today's projects. Both the techniques I'm going to share with you today for coloring on vellum are going to be using the exact same stamp set for the demonstration, but please keep in mind that you can use any stamp set of your choice. I've got vellum cardstock here, and I'm going to prep the surface for heat embossing with an embossing buddy. This is an anti-static powder in the bag that will actually tell the powder not to stick where there is an ink. That's going to help keep those stray flecks of powder off your paper. I'm choosing to use this very detailed peacock. And it comes from the stamp set called Royal Peacock. This also has coordinating dies that I'll share with you in just a moment. I'll be using my Versamark ink to go ahead and ink this up. This is the ink you're going to use when you're using embossing powder. Make sure you cover the surface well. This is a very large stamp, so I like to turn my paper sideways to make it easier for my hand. And then we're just going to center that on here since we're going to use the die. And then we'll go ahead and we'll press out that design. You'll want to make sure that you have your gold embossing powder nearby. I like to work over a coffee filter to catch the excess. And then we'll go ahead and remove our stamp. I'm gonna bring in that tray with the embossing powder. And I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna very generously cover this to make sure I don't miss an area. And I'll dump the excess right back into the coffee filter. You can look and if there's an area that you've missed, you can go back over it and powder it again while the ink is still wet. The next step is to heat set the powder so that it turns to a beautiful foil finish. And I've got my heat tool here. I'm going to turn it on number two, which is the high setting. Now, once the gun gets hot, it's going to help retain its heat because the nozzle is encased. You're going to want to protect your fingers because it is very, very hot. I like to work close to the paper. I prefer to keep the gun moving. And what you're looking is to make sure that that powder is turning to a foil finish. And you're going to see here on vellum, because it's a very thin and opaque paper, that it works very, very quickly. Once the powder gets hot, it actually helps conduct the heat across the paper itself. Before you joined me, I went ahead and made a second one so I can show you the two different ways to color. You're going to want to make sure, too, that you check this. Everything on here should look foily and there should be no powder left over. If it isn't heat set, it will simply wipe right off. We're going to work on the back side of both pieces of vellum. So I'm going to start by flipping this over, and I'm using grid paper here to protect my work surface since I'm going to be using a very high concentration of ink. I'm going to be using the Pacific Point ink pad. Keep in mind, because vellum is an opaque paper, the darker the ink is, the better appearance it's going to have from the front. So you're going to see that it looks very dark on the ink pad, but it's not going to look very dark from the front of the vellum. To apply the color, I'm going to be using a sponge dauber. I love these because your finger goes up inside, it makes it easy to use and to control. Now, typically when I load my dauber with ink, I will stamp off the excess here to be able to control the coverage. That is not the case for the technique I'm teaching you today because we want that strong pigmentation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work over the top of the head and we're gonna use small circular motions so that you can control the coverage. And you can work a little outside the lines. It's totally fine since there is a die for this. I'm going to bring a little color down to the beginning of the tail here. Now we're going to switch colors. My next color is Call Me Clover. This ink color and its coordinating accessories are currently on the Stampin' Up! Retired list. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up as well, and I want that high concentration of ink. And I'm going to work over some of that blue that we just placed down here. And then I'm going to color in the areas here on the tail where those feathers are. One thing about vellum is it's very slow to dry. And since this is a dye-based ink, you're going to want to make sure that if you want more color, that you let it sit and dry. Otherwise, all you'll be doing is moving it around. So I'm going to flip this over, and you're going to see here that the color is much lighter from the front. And this looks really good. The next step is to use the dye. The detailed peacock dies are extraordinary. In addition to a beautiful detail here, there's also one here that's an outline which will allow you to die cut the image. Since this is rather large, I wanna give you a tip. Before you place it in your die cutting machine, go ahead and make sure that it's well aligned. And then I like to use a post-it note or a post-it flag like this one. And once I have it where I want it, 
I go ahead and I anchor it down and you can use more than one and then you're going to put it between your clear cutting mats and then you're going to die cut it. Now let me show you the finished card with this specific technique. It's stunning, isn't it? That gold is played up beautifully with the gold glimmer paper along the sides and the gold glitter enamel dots that are here. That is the exact same image that we just created using the sponge daubers. Now I want to also give you another tip. This is actually adhered here using dimensionals. Now typically you may be thinking that dimensionals will show through the front of the vellum, but I found by placing them in just a few locations behind heavy embossing that they do not show. It's such a striking finish. Now let me teach you the second way that you can color vellum. This time we're going to use Stampin' Blend's alcohol-based markers. And once again, I'm going to work from the back for part of what I'm doing today. Remember, as I mentioned to you before, that the dark colors are going to look lighter from the front of this opaque paper. So I've chosen the Dark Knight of Navy Stampin' Blends marker. It is dual tipped, so there's one end here that's chiseled and one here that's a brush. I prefer to use the brush tip, that's just a matter of preference. And then I'm going to add some color inside the top of the peacock's head. I'm also going to color in the face and those white areas that are showing here in the breast. And then I'm going to turn this to make it easier for my hand. And what I'm going to do now is color in the area here that you can see the white from the back. The one nice thing about the alcohol Stampin' Blends markers is the alcohol will evaporate, allowing you to be able to have it dry a lot faster. You can come back over this once it's dry to provide a second coat if you'd like. So as not to muddy the colors, I do recommend that you let that alcohol evaporate before you move on. Otherwise, you'll stretch one color into the next. I'm going to be using the Call Me Clover Dark Stampin' Blends markers for the tail area. And again, I'm looking to cover those open areas. I'm going to stretch the color out over the feathers that are here at the top. And then once we get down here at the bottom where the feathers are more clustered together, what I chose to do was just go over those areas to fill them in. You really don't have to be precise. Now that you have them covered, what I would recommend that you do is flip it over and see if you like the way that it looks from the front. You can stretch out the color into some of those feathers outside those lines if you like that look. So let me just show you what I mean. You can come down here and add some stroke lines where those feathers are. And then what's going to happen is it's going to protrude a little bit outside of those lines. There's no right or wrong way, it's just a matter of preference. I'm gonna go in and fill in just a little bit more so I have a little bit more color around them. Just like the first color, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that evaporates before you flip this over for the next step. That alcohol will dissipate fairly quickly. Now that the alcohol has evaporated and left us with its true tone, I'm gonna to go ahead and flip it over and you're gonna see once again how the colors are a little bit more muted because of the opaque vellum. Really very pretty. Now you can leave it like this, but I wanna give you another tip about coloring on the vellum. You can actually also color from the front. So I'm gonna go back to the same Dark Knight of Navy Stampin' Blends markers and inside the areas here of the tail, I'm gonna add a little bit of accent. I'm gonna use the pointed full size tip on this so I'm going to need to be careful but I like it because I can actually just daub a little color right inside there and it'll spread all on its own. By adding small little areas of color you're going to get an additional layer of shading from the front than you would from the back which is going to create a very dramatic difference on this. The areas you choose to cover are entirely up to you. I'm looking for those small little triangle areas to fill them in once again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this evaporates and it's dry before you go ahead and die cut it. And you'll use the exact same die that we did on the first sample that we created. Now I have a finished card that I'd like to share with you. This uses that exact same technique. Do you see the striking difference from the color on the front versus the color on the back? But it gives this a beautiful two-tone finish. Whether you'd like to use sponge daubers to keep it nice and simple and then die cut or cut out your design, or if you'd like to use the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers either on the back or the front or both. It's a great way to provide simple color to your stamped and embossed projects. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, you can head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. Which one of these techniques is your favorite? I would love to know. Will you leave me a comment below? If you have enjoyed today's video, a thumbs up here on YouTube certainly helps. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 